Hey me everyone, it's Nicole the Blind Mage and today I'm going to over items that are essential for those starting their journey in magic. I thought it'd be smart to do a video that covers items that are recommended for those starting your magical journey but it's not recommended for you to have all the items, you can have some, you can have all, or you should take the items and add your own spin and interpretation to it. As I mentioned, this is just a general list of items. If you guys have questions or it doesn't seem clear, I am going to use the same list to make other videos. Do more in depth and details about each item. I feel like the two most important items for any student of magic is a Book of Shadows, which is also known as a grimoire, and it's a book that holds writings of any spells, herbs, or any interactions you have while studying magic. The other is having your altar or magical space set up for meditation, rituals, and spell work. And I actually did a video covering altars and more in detail, and I'll post that below if you want to check it out. With magic, you want to ensure that everything you do is balanced, and the first four items, each one recommends element, but an alternative idea for it is to have bowls with elements as a replacement. So the items are a wand, a flame, a chalice, and a pentacle. A wand represents air. It is used to cleanse the air around you. And some are your bought or homemade. The second one is a flame and it is known as a ceremonial dagger or knife, but the thing most people get confused about a flame is that it is not used for physical cutting. It is used to create signals or to cut through auras, energies in the air. Next one is a chalice or a cup. And it is used to hold water. And it can either be rudder water or some people add salt water as a cleanser. And the last one, a pentacle, is to represent the earth. Many people will carve a pentacle into the ground as an extra layer of protection for the circles. Lauren asked me a question out of four, which one represents fire? And I don't have a clear answer. I know it's either the wand or the flame, but even tarot, the two can symbolize the other and I'm not sure which one is clear element of fire and which one's air. So I think either one could work for your element. I didn't mean to hurry off for game. You're not wrong about that. I'm, I'm not sure but I don't know. Next items are a cauldron which to me use for creating potions and also doing herbs and preparation. And when dicing out hers and as for your potions, a lot of people use a bodice. I believe that's the pronunciation of it, which is a herb or witch's knife. And unlike the flame, it is used for cutting. And most people buy it with a crescent curved to the blade. It's held apart from the flame. The next couple items are used for cleansing the area around your altar, removing native energies from yourself and others, and also preparing area for casting spells. The first two are a broom and a bell or a bell, depending on which one you prefer more. Brooms are used to help manifest the idea of sweeping away native energies around you and some people may prefer to use a bell for the same method that by bringing a bell around a circle or around yourself will disperse any native energy. Next item is candles. Candles can be all different shapes and sizes and even certain cutters can be used in spell work. A lot of spells 
recommend different candles, cutters, and how long have one lit. But if you're like me and you're uncomfortable with lit candles, they're not needed for a spell. There are alternatives that you can find to cast the same spell without using them. The next two items are a smud stick and incense and censer. So a censer is what you put the incense in while you burn it. So you don't burn your fingers or accidentally drop incense while it's burning. And this allows for the area to fill with smells of herbs or flowers that may help with your spell work. And some people believe that using a smudge stick is a way to wipe your body down of any energy because you're smudging or running ash over your body. So the next items can be used in the ritual and to be more personalized to fit you. The first is a robe, which not everyone wears. There are a few witches and wizards that will do spells in a nude. <laughs> and a robe could be a symbol of a bathroom, or it could be a cloak or a several robe that you create yourself. Next item is considered jewelry, and I think that's a bit vague. I think the better idea is to have a focus gem. So a lot of people wear either stones of protection or their birthstone to help focus in their energy and help add an extra layer of protection to the rituals. Another idea or alternative when creating your circles is to use crystals. Some people study crystals and will interpret it into their spell work. Different crystals can have different properties behind them. Some are used as photos, some are used as banishment for new energies, some are for healing. But I would do a bit of research before you use any crystal you find to ensure they're being used right. And I feel like the same to be used for herbs that you need to have understanding to ensure you don't use the wrong herbs while you're practicing. What would happen if you use the wrong one? If it, you use the wrong herb or crystal? Well, I feel like crystals, it wouldn't get bad, it's just be more at risk of having a negative effect on your spell. But if you're using herbs and say you're making a potion to help with digestion, that can make you sick or dizzy and it doesn't sound like something you want to interact with by mistake, you know? Like I mentioned, I will make more videos doing more in detail. I just thought it'd be fun to give you guys a broad idea of what most people see as a starter kit for magic. And if there's anything I missed or anything that should be added, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, blessed be!